Okay, episode, one of the episodes now, 419. This is all about speed dating, the pros and cons and other choices. Hi, and welcome to my broadcast. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day, yes, every day, I do these talks called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And this is number 419, because they keep on coming. <laughs> There's always more content. So today's topic is about speed dating. Um, because I went to an event last night that was labeled that, although I think I would call it something different. And then on top of that, there's um, some guidance I want to suggest, some thoughts about it, pros and cons, and maybe some other ideas I can recommend. So how's that for, how's them apples, as it were? So thanks for being with me. I right, get better position on the chair. Um, camera's staying where it is, which is good. So speed dating. The origins of speed dating, from what I've been told by a friend of mine who is the one who said she created it 20 plus years ago, um, my props to my friend Ren Renee Piani. Speed dating was basically, and if you've ever done speed dating, you know what, it, what it's like, is basically set up where you are um, single, <laughs> of course, because it's meant to be for single people. And this is this predates Tinder and dating apps and swipe, phone, swipe apps, everything else. So, for those of you who've never done this before, let me explain what speed dating was and still is to a degree when it shows up. Speed dating was set up basically where it was almost like, um, I would say musical chairs in a way, because what happens is, and this is generally for heterosexual people, because if it was gay ones, it'd be a different format, but imagine heterosexual type speed dating. So one side of the um, line of people would be men, one side of the line would be women. And you'd be sitting across, sitting across from each other, usually, sometimes you'd be standing, but usually sitting, and sometimes across from tables, sometimes just chairs across from each other. And you'd have a limited amount of time, maybe as short as two minutes, maybe as much as five, where you would basically have the clock would start and the um, facilitator, the timekeeper, the, um, <laughs> the person running the event would basically start the timer and you would have a short period of time to introduce yourself to your partner, find out more about them, um, make a note on a, little, on, a, on a little sheet of paper and then time, Move to the, you know, men move to the right or whatever, women move to the left, whatever it was, to move to in front of another person. So by the time an hour, hour and a half had gone by, you would have met 10, 12, 20, 30 people, prospective dates. So that's why it's called speed dating. One of the benefits of speed dating is you get to meet lots of people, which is really cool in the sense that you're not just going one, time, one at a time, meeting somebody and going, maybe we can work out. When you meet that many people, you get to meet a spectrum usually speaking, and it can be very beneficial because you could actually get clear in the process of meeting these people of what does work and what doesn't work for you. Sorry, what does work and what doesn't work for you, frankly, because if you went in with any ideas, speed dating can give you some <laughs> very effectively. Now, there are other forms of, of dating media, sorry, there are other forms of um, prospective date meetup environments. That's a convoluted way of saying it. And um, what I went, with, what I went, attended last night, what I went to, what I attended last night, proper English, was listed as speed dating, but I would call it more of what I would say mingle dating. And I'll explain what I mean. Um, actually, it was a wonderful event, and I recommend this. This is through uh, Blakeswood Matchmaking. Blake, Blakeswood is a one word. Um, people I've, I've actually hung out with a couple of times, a few times now. And anyway, last night's event was at a little private um, culinary school, I think it was certainly has the layout for that, small one. And what would happen is we, would, we were making pasta. That was the, um, the reason for doing it, in the sense of what we were there for. But there was preamble up on the, up on the deck at the top, and there was, there was snacks and wine and conversation and mingling and everything else, which was great. And then there were three, that we were divided into three groups, and there were probably a total of 30 of us there, so roughly 10 per group, mix of men and women. And we would then go down to the floor where they had all the cooking, and we would make pasta. So we'd have three different stages, and then we'd rotate the groups of men and women, so we'd meet everybody. Very smart, very simple, but it wasn't the pressure of one-on-one -on -one all the time. And that was what I liked about it. What was happening was we were basically five or six, five men or so with five women, and then rotate different groups of each, each other. And then afterwards, we actually sat down and had food cooked, so we actually ate um, at different tables too. So it was constantly mingling and moving around and meeting new people, which was, I think, maybe one of the most best ways of doing a speed dating format because, first of all, the guys get to meet each other too. We actually got to hang out and it was kind of fun for us to meet each other and get to know each other. 
Secondly, it was more relaxed because there was alcohol. <laughs> wine doesn't hurt. There was, it was an Italian themed evening, hence the pasta and the wine. And also the um, antipasto before, which was nice as well. And so for me, that was a more um, conducive environment to meet somebody. And there's a nice connection there, and I had some nice conversations. And I really liked the way it was done. And it was, it went from, it was only like two hours, two and a half, maybe two and a half after somebody finished, like from seven to nine, nine thirty. So in that period of time, we each met 15 or so of the opposite sex, which was cool. So less stressful, less keeping track of notes, because the other, oh, by the way, the other part of the speed dating format is you have to keep like a scorecard. So basically what happened is you'd have to keep track of the numbers, and I think everyone, everyone had either a name or a number on their, like stuck it as a label at the speed dating setup, not what we did last night, but the speed dating structure. So you'd actually have a little sheet, cheat sheet and you go like, so number one, yes, number two, no, number three, like to find out more information. So you'd have your little list you'd make. So by the end of the event, everyone turned their cards in and the facilitator would then find the people that both wanted to find out more about the other person and match them up. If you like somebody that didn't like you, no match. If somebody liked you, you didn't like them, no match. So it was a in some ways, a kind of, kind of uncomfortable way of doing things, from my perspective. Again, this is not saying the way it is, I'm just saying my experience of it, so just to be clear. This mingle dating, as I'm calling it, or mingle introductions, whatever the formal name is for it, for me is a much more conducive way. Now, if you've watched my broadcast before, you know I have a certain agenda um, in rules, in a way, about dating and meeting people in relationship, the way you should pre pre preface that by doing your own work first. Now last night, there was a wide array of people there, amongst the men and the women. Some who have done work, some who haven't done any work, and it's kind of, I couldn't say I could tell definitely, but definitely after talking to each other for a while, you can get to know them and what they're, where they're coming from. Some of them have just, they're out dating, they're not on a path to find that one, and other people who are looking for the one they want to be with. It's a very a wide range. Now for all of us who were there last night, and say all of you watching who are single, I'm a firm believer that our, um, I'm getting me, I was in the background. <laughs> I'm cat sitting, so my, my friend, my friend, my feline friend is here, and so he likes to interject in a conversation. So, to rewind what I was just saying, so if you are single and you're looking at relationships and using different formats, whether it is speed dating or mingle dating or dating apps and everything else, as I've said before many times, it behooves you, yes, behooves you, fancy words, to really do the work of um, gaining clarity about what you want. So rather than going out and meeting people and hoping you find one you like, start with what you really want. What are your priorities? I, did, I don't know if you talked recently about the red flags, stop signs, that was last week, I think. Um, yellow flags and other things about what is a no, what is a definite no, what is a stop, leave, don't go any further, and what is a good opportunity to connect and meet somebody. Because when you build that internal um, um, qualification list, perhaps is the way of putting it, then the chance of meeting somebody is much higher because one, you'll, not, you'll match up more quickly, and secondly, when you're out in the world, you won't be wasting time with people who don't fit that. It kind of helps that way. Um, there was another piece in there, what was that? Just a quick reminder, yes it is talk by the way. To, to make a, take a detour, what I was aware of last night also, where there were people out there having a lot of fun, I was also aware that some of them were looking for someone to make them feel complete. And yesterday, if you watched my Facebook Live, that was 418. That was all about self-love. And I did, I did call it self-love. Um, self love really, really is the answer because for many people looking for love in a relationship they're coming from a place of emptiness or a place of um, feeling incomplete and I will just reiterate if you didn't see yesterday's broadcast please watch it I gave a very powerful homework assignment and I'm actually creating sorry just getting in cat just making noises over there sorry I gave out an assignment which I'm now creating I'm actually going to create a downloadable workbook or a downloadable guide sheet and an audio to go with it at some point which will be about how to build a self love practice so that's something I'm offering and going to be promoting soon so this piece though 
is getting clear about the dating practice. But again, as I said, preface that with things like you need to know what you really want to practice and stabilize your own self-love, self-support. Because frankly, for many people out there in the dating apps, they're looking for a place that is um, unprepared. For example, if you're someone who is, say, looking for a new car, and I've used this analogy before, but I use it again here. If you're out there looking for a new car, it does help if you've gone through like consumer reports and the websites and read some articles, maybe watched some videos online about cars to get a sense of what you're looking for. Because there are so many cars out there to choose, say, I'm going to go get a car and then go out with it. no idea where you're going. You just go to a dealership or to a used car lot and just go walking through the aisles aimlessly. You might pick a car that looks good but doesn't work very well. The same is true for relationships. <laughs> Let me sure you get this point. Because the dating paradigm, the relationship paradigm that we're in, the exploration we have about relationships, if you don't care about what you're looking for, so be it. If you don't have an attachment to what you want to be around, what sort of quality of relationship, if you want to be around somebody who respects you, appreciates you, honors you, which I hope you do, then you're putting your heart on the line. And you're basically doing it in a way that is not necessarily most conducive to what you really want. So whether you do go on these speed dating excursions, or in my, what I explained last night was a mingle dating explore, exploration, going in with a understanding of what you're looking for first, a feeling and a sense of what you really want, will prepare you for a much healthier relationship choice. So when you go to these events, you might meet some wonderful people, and one or two of those might fit the criteria you're looking for. But if you don't have the criteria, you won't know that. And if you're basing it purely upon meeting somebody who is attractive, you could really come up, you really could um, end up in a bad place because people look good, quite often they're not necessarily internally running a good um, self expression, shall we say. So I recommend doing the work first to, to really get clear about what you want before you go out to these experiences and then have fun with the experiences. Go out and explore, have, you know enjoy yourself. But start from the place of really loving yourself first, as I mentioned yesterday, and also get clear about what it is you want in a relationship. So when you do go on these dating explorations and excursions, your guidance system is aligned. So you actually are actually more accurate to focus on where you want to go and what you want. And yeah, you might be surprised out there, but you won't be going out blind and um, uncaring about what you're looking for. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So with that, um, I don't think there's anything else from that talk. So just to, yeah, just to recap quickly. So again, mingle dating I think is a really good idea. It worked really well. I loved it. And this idea of doing a structured or a formatted um, way of meeting people is great. In fact, I believe what I have from place where the next one they're doing in August is going to be a murder mystery. So it'll be like a dinner, mingle murder mystery, playing together, having some fun. And if you're going to meet somebody, why not have fun doing it? So I think it's a really good idea. So I'm recommending their services. I'm also recommending that idea of how you do things to meet people when you do it in an organized format. So that's my review <laughs> of the speed dating, mingle dating format. So I hope this has been, use, been of use to you. And I think that's about it for this one. I appreciate you watching and being with me today. This is my daily uh, broadcast, so it is my joy to share, inspire, and um, thank you, Elena. So gentle and conscious in my language. I'm just. I'm just, uh, what's I looking for? Sharing my experience and what I, what I, and also my advice. I mean, this, this is my work. This is my passion. So, Elena, you're welcome. And it's my calling to do this, to serve, to inspire, especially for women to help them get what they want. So, you're welcome. Um, this is my daily broadcast. I'm trying to say it in the right order, which is usually on Facebook Live. So, this is a Facebook Live that came out first, which is why I'm responding to comments on the screen from Facebook Live. If you're watching the replay, they'll be below that on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. If you watch it on YouTube, you won't see the comments. So that's why, that's why I said I'm out loud. But you can watch them also on YouTube. I do the replay up there as well, which is Barry Selby is my channel and Message for the Mask is my playlist. And also now they're appearing on my iTunes podcast. I've now got a podcast, which is all my broadcast, all my videos converted to audio. So you can listen to them when you're driving, walking around, doing other things where you need to keep your eyes on the road. Um, so go to iTunes, search for Messages from the Masculine, you can subscribe to my play playlist there and download them at your pleasure, your leisure, and put them on your phone and listen to wherever you go. Um, 
At this point, though, there's still more to come. This this is 419 of my Facebook lives, and my list of pl re my replays on on iTunes is a lot less than that. So they're growing. So stay tuned. Subscribe now, you get notified when the new ones come out. If you're someone who's looking for love in all the wrong places and you want to find the right way to do it, that's what I'm here for. Um, I invite you to come check me out on my website, which is barryselby.com. On the left-hand side of the menu is an invitation for a conversation called Let's Chat. Sign up there. It's a gift from me to you. Enter the information there. Fill out the, uh, choose a time. Fill out the fill out information, and I'll get back to you and we'll set up a time to talk. That's my gift, my opportunity for you to work with me, find out what I do, and for me to provide you some guidance. So if you got value from this, check out my other talks. Um, that's it. I'll see you again tomorrow. That'll be number 420. No uh, euphemisms there. I wish you a pleasant evening. Take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.